Wendy Bauman, and I'm president and CVO of the Wisconsin Women's Business Initiative Corporation. And I am thrilled today to share another of our series of Wibbick Cooking Up Business. And today we have Olga White of, I love the name of her business, which is I Love Tamales. And she is from Racine, Wisconsin, and is going to join us today to talk a little bit about herself to talk a little bit about her entrepreneurial journey and really love of food that she's already shared with us. Definitely to do a little demonstration. And what she chose to demonstrate today, when I received the recipes in advance, I thought, Ooh, how are we gonna do that all in 12 or 15 minutes? But she said she was running around her kitchen today and prepping. So she really will be able to share some great things. Um, and I won't give it away what she's doing because what she's doing is very interesting because generally the mm -mm soup that she's doing does not fit in the same sentence with vegetarian. And that she's choosing to do that, I think is really interesting. So we'll hear about that later. And then as we close, like always with our entrepreneurs and business owners in the food and beverage business, we'll ask them for some sage advice to someone else who's thinking about starting a business or growing a business in the food and beverage business or not, and just need some support or some ideas, or maybe just a little bit of, hey, you can do this. And I'm there for you because entrepreneurs are there for each other and especially in the food and beverage business. So Olga, you're right now in downtown Racine or where are you physically right now? Right now, I'm in a commercial kitchen in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Okay, out of the Southeast office. So Good. Olga White, tell us a little bit about you, your person, about you and love of food. Hi, um, well, I'm a super tamale lady. I love making tamales. Um, that's just what I excel at, but I am a true chef at heart. Um, I love to cook. Um, I've been passionate about cooking since, you know, since I was a small child. I always wanted to have my own cooking show. I remember when I was four, I would get up early in the morning before I would go get ready to pre for preschool. And uh, I would watch um, these women on like that PBS channel, you know, they would sit there and they pull out all their little ingredients. Or um, I remember falling in love with some of the way that Julia Child did things on this network. Um, and I, and that's always what I wanted to be. You know, I was, I was always good at cooking and. And I'm so happy that that's what I do now. Oh, that's beautiful. So did you grow up with a cooking family? I think you mentioned your parents uh, from Monterey, Mexico. Did you grow up with just food being around? I mean, I grew up with, even I grew up in the United States, I grew up with my dad specifically um, cooking, dinner parties, cooking, attention to detail, you know, parsley was even on our plate for our little eggs and bacon in the morning. So tell me just about the food. Was that part of your life too? In addition to, I love watching the PBS special and I also love Julia Child too. <laughs> Absolutely. I, uh, so when I was a little girl, my dad, uh, he worked at Chrysler for many years, but for about six months every year, he would, he would go to Mexico. And during this time, my grandmother would make tortillas by hand and she would show us how to do it and we'd be in the kitchen and um, we would make tamales there with her and we would spend so much time like in the kitchen just you know always doing something you know it was and, and it just felt like the majority part of our day was in the kitchen but we loved it because yeah. we were a family we were on food um my grandmother would excel at making some of the things um mm. So she was really good and she taught us that craft. I still remember like before we had this like really lucky kitchen aid mixer, we would have to make masa by hand so we would need it. And my grandmother insisted that the water be boiling and she would only give us a few seconds to get ready to knead it with our hands. And she didn't care that we were like six, <laughs> but we did it. And, um, and it, you know, I, a lot of my craft came from my family and being around the food and falling in love with the way it is. And when I'm in the kitchen, I'm very nostalgic. I feel I, nostalgia does come over me, but I almost feel like I'm in a trance, you know? Yeah. And it's, it, it just comes to me and, and I'm just really good at it. And, uh, you know, I can't say I am professionally trained, but um, I know that, you know, I feel like I just have it inside of me. I just know it's there, you know? Yeah. No, I get it. I get it. I, you know, think of myself as a home chef and I've never taken, I think, a cooking class in my life. And I think I'm a superior home chef. And just so you know, today I put this on in your honor. So this was given to me. It's a beautiful chef jacket 
This was Hecho in Mexico, it was made in Mexico, given to me by two dear friends, Martha and Luis from Mexico. And they know how much I cook because I constantly WhatsApp them photos. Tonight I made this, tonight a Mexican uh, you know, meal tonight. I made my homemade tortillas. Look at me, look at these empanadas. And so when I came there, they gave me this as a gift. So I put it on in honor of you. Very nice. Yeah. Thank okay. You. So little girl grew up making homemade tamales, grew up not store-bought tortillas, grew up in the kitchen, family life and so on. Um, when did you say, I think this might be my career? This might be where I also bring livelihood home and want to start a business. When did that happen? So when I first got out of high school, uh, I... Uh, decide, you know, I really, you know, when you get out of high school, the first thing you're thinking is money, right? So you go to school, I went to school to be, um, I went to school to be a human resource and work in human resources. And I did, I worked in staffing and human resources for a good 12 years. I hired people all over Southeastern Wisconsin um, through several staffing agencies and uh, um, even some, you know, some private companies. Um, and uh, that's just what I did. I, at one point, I was even working in a marketing firm, and I was hiring all the models at, uh, for, for some of the big name brands uh, for uh, beer or cigarette. And I would hire all of the models, um, and the jobs paid okay. Um, but the point where it really changed me was when I realized I absolutely hated sitting behind a cubicle and the redundancies of having that job. And, and I realized how hard it was to kind of climb up that ladder. And at the same time, I wasn't enjoying it. Yeah. And I was always looking forward to coming home and making something to eat or cooking or having people over. And that just turned into like, you know, that I just realized my passion was there. So anyway, um, one Christmas party, uh, you know, I was asked to bring, everybody had to bring in a plate and I brought in a dozen tamales and that dozen tamales turned into a dozen orders. And it just kept going from there. And then people weren't just ordering a dozen. And, you know, I'm making these for friends and stuff. And I broke the stove in my house and I realized I was totally enjoying doing or going yeah. home and making tamales so much more than I was sitting at this cubicle, you know, looking at the clock and waiting for it to be Monday or, or on Saturday or Friday, whatever day, you know? And so I really, I, I just, just like that. Um, yeah. You know, and I think, so that's, that's what it changed for me. For me at, at that point where I was making more money sitting at, you know, coming to work to sell the tamales I made the night before than I was sitting at my desk, mm -hmm. I knew that I had something. Yeah. And so then you go, okay, I think I got something. Um, did you take like one toe out of the water of working for the staffing of the marketing place? Or did you go sort of cold turkey? I'm done. All the best. And I'm starting my tamale business. How was that transition? And what did you do around like business plan? Did you need financing? How did Wibbick help? So, um, so I literally just jumped off the boat. Like I had a couple of checks, like I had a couple of checks saved, saved up. I literally jumped off the boat and I just started making tamales. I had already had my coworkers were already customers and they already had pre-orders and I already had this little book thing going. Um, and it just, it's, it's, a, it was a very natural thing. It, you know, um, we have, the, I have this thing. I always say what it's in you or it's on you. Now, if it's on you, it'll fall off. If it's in you, it's inside of you. It's oh, I like that. Here. And you're and you're flowing right through that, yeah. um, and so I did. That's exactly what happened to me. But I didn't have that much money, so I literally started with a tent, um, and you know I got a hold of this really nice lady at Wibbick, um, and you know she helped me get financing um, to get a trailer. Now I have to tell you, I'm really lucky I got a trailer, but they helped me fund the entire a commercial kitchen inside of my trailer. They helped me with my plans. Um, and I just kind of had to grow it from there. And I had to see myself out of the space I was working at, out of my kitchen. Um, so I had to go get a commercial license and all that stuff. And Wibbeck really helped me with that. I was, I was very happy. There were a lot of things that I can thank Wibbeck for today that have made me the, the super tamale lady that I am, you know, oh. I'm very thankful for that. 
Okay. Oh, that's beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, great. Anybody else also help on that journey? Like for, can I ask, was your family supportive or other people that just sort of helped on the business side of things as you were doing this? Oh, absolutely. Like my husband, um, he's, he's the, you know, he's not just the love of my life. He's like the genius. Like he's really good at what he does. Um, he went to school for marketing. He's got a master's. He's got a bunch of patents, but He's really good at helping me, you know, with the business side of I Love Tamales. Um, so I'm really thankful for him. He made, so he was in radio first. We had this amazing radio voice and he would do all of my commercials and I, they would play over the county fair and then people would be singing or, you know, singing the commercial throughout the fair. And he was so good at it. And he literally exploded my business out of the water. Like he really... Yeah, he was awesome. He's awesome at it. I still think I have some commercials. Um, he he's actually out of the radio business now. Um, but you know, when, when I first started, that's what he did. He made my commercials. He's got the like I said, very uh, a very uh, attractive voice. So anyway, long story short, yes. Okay, good. Yeah, maybe send us those commercials so maybe we can add that to the show actually and, and share one of those commercials before we close on it too. So send us that link. So um, we're going to go into cooking, but I had one other question here. So you really went from sort of passion of cooking, giving gifts even a little bit as tamale, bringing them to parties and so on, to then getting some physical orders. And then tell me just about the tenth transition to what you have now. Do you have a food truck, trailer? What do you, what do you have now? Where can I go right now today and buy your tamales? Oh, so I love to mop. So we work out of, right now we work out of a trailer, but we travel all over Southeastern Wisconsin. When we first started, um, we were, uh, when we first started, I literally made a tent out of pallets. Um, and I found um, a trailer. Um, uh, anyway, long story short, I had a trailer and, you know, Whippick had me funded. Um, and after that, um, you know, after we got it all licensed and commercial, um, we have it parked in Racine. You could find I Love Tamales on the corner of Kiwani in Michigan. Um, usually we're there Monday through Friday. We tend to be open Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We still need like time during the week to be open. But you guys can also catch us at the Kenosha Harbor Market on some Saturday morning. Great. Good. Um, and we're usually there. Um, we're, the, we're known because our tamales are really, really big. Um, okay. We're gluten free and we have a lot of vegan options. Okay. Yeah, which is unusual because I'm, I'm a vegetarian. I eat I seafood and fish, but I don't eat the other, and that's often hard to find. Um, so, again, we will also list all those sites so that our viewers know where they can go and find you, too. So, you know. Okay, let's cook. What are you going to demonstrate for us today? So, what I'm going to make for you guys is corn tortillas, um, and we're going to make vegan menudo. So, vegan menudo, just in case you know what corn tortillas are, but vegan menudo. Um, is initially, uh, it's a very traditional dish in Mexico. It's cow stomachs too. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's why I said when I saw your recipe, I'm going, menudo, you're kidding me. Because it always looks so good at the Mexican grocery stores when I go to Mexico, but of course I can't eat it. I don't eat meat. And then when I saw vegetarian, I'm going, she's killing me here. Okay. So I changed it. You know, there, some of us just don't eat meat. I changed it. There's a lot of things that um, in the recipe, and you'll see, I've been able to, keep the essence of the menudo, but at the same time, make it vegetarian. So I'm gonna start with the tortillas really quick. So this is the easiest recipe ever. So we start with, right now I've got two cups of masa harina in my mixer, and I've already kind of put this in here. Can you see? So I've got a, so if you look in here, I got about two cups of okay. uh, masa harina in here, and I've got, about, and I've got one teaspoon, or I'm gonna add actually one teaspoon of sea salt. Now the reason why, uh, so I have ground, very finely grounded sea salt. And the reason why you do that is because it integrates better into the flour or uh -huh. into the masa. Um, so, and it's very simple. So I have a hot water bowl in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just blend our dry ingredients here. So if you, if you don't have a KitchenAid mixer, you could still do this by hand. Okay. okay. So this is really simple. So I've got a hot water bowl. And again, we have to have the hot water because grandma said you have to have the hot water boiling, right? Yep. And homemade tortillas, I make them not a lot. I buy really, really good tortillas actually from a lot of our clients that make some tortillas. 
um, or I'll buy them at El Rey in uh, Milwaukee area. But I have made homemade tortillas and it's sort of like pasta. Homemade pasta, are you kidding? It just blows it away and homemade tortillas, the same. Okay, yes, absolutely. Okay, so I've mixed that. So what I'm incorporating and very slowly, you're only gonna add between one cup to two cups of water. And it's kind of hard to tell, masa's, uh, masa flour is a little bit, um, sometimes it can be really airy, sometimes it can be really dense um, when it's dry, I'm talking. So anyway, so I'm gonna mix this and I'm just gonna add, I'm just gonna add the flour or the water until it starts to really kind of blend in there. And I, like I said, do it slowly. Uh -huh. So gradually add the water. And then Olga, I could use a hand. I don't have a fancy mixer like that, actually. I, I just don't do as much stuff like that. I'm a blender person like every day, but I could use a hand mixer too, right? Yeah, okay. you, can use, you can totally use a hand mixer with this. Um, it might actually be easier. So here at this cup, so we only use about a cup and a half of water. And the masa should, and I'm gonna show you how it looks right here. So here we have it. See uh -huh. it so, it shouldn't, it shouldn't come back up with your finger. See? Yeah. Okay. So, um, and it should be kind of springy. So anyway, you should let this rest. So you, this, this should rest for a good 10 minutes. Now, good news. I already let it rest. <laughs> <laughs> and when you rest, are we resting? And I know the recipe will say, are we resting at a room temperature or are we resting in the refrigerator? No, rest, in, rest at room temperature. Okay. So right here. Okay. So here, so I actually, I'm in love with the, I made my own um, new corn masa this morning, um, which I absolutely, like I love, love. Um, so this morning I made blue corn masa. So instead of the white one, I had purple or um, it's blue corn. So oh this, yes, those are my favorite. The blue corn are my favorite. Same, same ingredients guys, uh, same amount of water, same amount of salt, very simple. Um, so anyway, this is a tortilla press. I don't know if you guys have seen these before. Um, this one is is not a porous finish. I'm not sure. Uh, this is I think this is galvanized, so it's really nice because this will last you a little bit longer. Okay. Either way, um, always wipe it down before you use it. Some of this stuff comes; it has a lot of dust on it, and you don't know what kind of metals are on it. So anyway, uh, usually you would take to make this. So now what I've done is let me show you. So this is a sandwich bag. You know, they usually, I used to fight back and forth with the, with Saran Wrap, but I got tired of that. And I found this to be so much more efficient. So yeah. I took, I took a gallon Ziploc bag and I, and I put it and I uh, cut, cut the edges off just to keep it open. And I have a two tablespoon mixer or um, scoop here. So what I'll do oh, is an ice cream, ice cream scoop, keep them consistent. Yep. Yep. So we do this. So. I want to make sure we kind of level this off. So I just try to make it nice and level. Always try to put it, don't put it right here in the center of this. Always try to put it like just a little bit for, just to give it enough space to grow this way. And anyway, do this. And this thing's like magic. So. Yeah, it's just fun. I mean, again, talk about doing this with people, you know, talk about, hey, let's make homemade tortillas while we have some, Yes, it's, 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 and it's, I'll go and you know, oh my gosh, homemade tortillas then for our dinner, you know, tonight. So it's absolutely, it's the easiest thing. So here yeah. we have, you know, a homemade tortilla. Now you want to start this. Now I have a couple of my hair. You can use a griddle, you can use a hot pan, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to let this rest there and I'll make a couple more as I'm going. But making tortillas, um, it's quick, it's easy, it's simple, it, it's, um, you know, Whenever you like looking for a good snack, this is always like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just, you know, again, in the Mexican specifically uh, culture and so on, not m most of Mexico, not all of Mexico. Again, we always yes. categorize things so much, but tortillas, bread. Yeah, you know, absolutely. If you don't have tortillas, you, you know, if you don't have bread in the house, you need to go out and get it. It's just all the time. Yeah. I love tortillas. I make my eggs, I make uh, huevos motelenos, I love my tortillas in the bottom, and I'm more of a corn tortilla gal too. Yeah, and they're gluten free. So if you're like, if you're, um, if you have a celiac disease or you have uh, a gluten allergy, this is, this is right up your alley. 
cool. Okay, let's move on just for time wise to the menudo if we can. Okay, so let's, so while those are cooking there, While we're doing that, we turn this off. That should be done. Okay, so what we have for my menudo is simple. So I'm gonna just, if you guys don't mind, I'm just gonna pour some of the, or bring some of the ingredients up here. Um, Again, you're, you're very organized. You're gonna be great when you have your own cooking show. <laughs> All right, so just, I'm just gonna give you guys the real quick basics. Okay. I've already done a lot of the prep work and the hard, the, the, the longest thing for making vegan menudo is making the chili paste. So, so what I have here is dried basia peppers, right? These are already dried. Um, so what you want to do is you want to rehydrate these and um, probably give it a good hour in the hot water and you'll see that they'll bubble back up and they'll turn into a nice chili paste. Then we put them in a blender and we throw in a couple cloves of garlic and then you come up with this nice sauce. Yeah, okay. the so color, I, the beautiful. Give me just real quick for folks that aren't, you know, like are at the 101 stage. Um, there are seeds in those peppers. So do we take the seeds out a little bit before we even um, hydrate them? So it, so it's up to you. If you the okay. spicier you want, if, the, if you want it spicy, leave them in there. If you don't okay. want it spicy, take it out. Um, there's, I, I'm not gonna lie, there's still spice in the tamales, like, like heat, there's still heat in it. So. You, you kind of want to watch with that. Everybody has sure. different colors. I feel like this is really mild, but for other people, this might just be a little bit. So, you know, okay. take it easy. So you're going to put this with the hydrated water, with, with the water, and you're going to blend it, throw in some garlic. Mm -hmm. um, so here I have a combination of seasonings. We have like garlic, um, cumin, I have some oregano in here. So um, I put a little bit of those seasonings in the blender just to kind of get it going. Um, with the water, and then I make this paste. Great. So and we'll that, share that all on the recipe too. So excellent. Mm -hmm. Cool. So when I so then the first thing when you're making vegan menudo is you want to fry up onions, and that's the hardest part. So I've already fried up onions here, and you can kind of see. And what kind of onions do you use, Olga? So these are our yellow onions. Okay. Garnish, you want to garnish with a purple onion. Um, so I'm going to let that preheat up. So what I have in there is I, I started frying up onions and I made a veggie stock. So you can make your own veggie stock. You can buy veggie stock. Um, when I make my veggie stock, I tend to boil like a lot of celery, onions, and carrots. And I kind of let it do its thing in there. Um, add some salt, some garlic. And that's how I make my own veggie stock. So I've already went ahead and did that. And I've already added it to the fried onions. So you want to fry the onions for a good 10 minutes. And then once you fry the onions up, you want to add your veggie broth. So this is actually vegan menudo. Uh, so usually in menudo, in real, in, in traditional menudo, there's that honeycomb part of the stomach that they add. But I've made a substitute for that. So what I've done is I've made cauliflower steak. Hi, I was wondering what you were going to use. I was wondering so, what you're going to use for the menudo part. Wow, that's brilliant. I love it. Yeah, so it kind of gives it the same feel, you know. Um, so I cut, so what I did was I took a cauliflower and I sliced it, you know, really nice. And I tried to keep them as thick as I could because, you know, the turks are kind of fall apart. But yeah. this, this makes, this looks very much like hominy, you know, or, or not hominy. This looks very much like the, like the um, honeycomb the yeah. white that's in there. So anyway, so you always want to add in your hearty, your hardest vegetables first. So, so we're going to add in our cauliflower. We're going to add in carrots. These are already cut and sliced. So if you don't want to do it yourself, just buy some sliced carrots. And I added chayote. So chayote is a Mexican squash. Um, yeah. I sliced it up like this, um, but it goes in there. And um, you could also use red cabbage. Okay. And then the most important part about any menudo is the hominy. Okay. So they, this is a white hominy. Uh, my favorite hominy is a purple. I don't have any today, but this white hominy, it's so delicious. It's really what gives it the essence of menudo. So you'll really love that. Okay. Just a couple things. Chayote again is an amazing, amazing vegetable. I boil them up. I saute them with eggs and so on. You kept the skin on your chayote? Yes, I did. Okay. 
And then yep. hominy, where do you get the hominy? Chayote, you're probably gonna have to get a little bit more at an ethnic uh, Mexican grocery store. The hominy, did you buy it canned, jarred? How did you get the hominy? Oh, hominy, so here here in the US, you, you're gonna get your hominy in a can. Um, and the they can. have okay. in a can, yep. And, you, and actually, I got, I got um, you can find a lot of stuff at a lot of local grocery stores. They're starting okay. to expand their section. Yeah, um, I, I got the chayote from Woodman's. Um, okay, I, I got the hominy. I think I got the hominy from Woodman's too. It's a great. It's a. It, they have an enormous ethnic aisle there. So anyway, yeah. Okay, really so when folks go out, they don't have to. You know, again, some places do, some places don't. You know. Yep, absolutely. Um, so let me just. So anyway, let me just show you really quick. So what I'll do is I'll just add my cauliflower steaks. Okay, so you sauteed the onions first, classic olive oil or canola. What kind of oil did you saute oh, the onions in? We sauteed our onions in about five tablespoons of olive oil. Just to olive get oil, so you did olive oil, okay. And then you put in the harder vegetables. You've got your paste, you've got your stock all made. Yep, so we'll just start adding our veggies. Then you add your stock. So so I've already added my cauliflower steaks, so I'll add that, I'll add my carrots, I'll add my chayote, and I'll just let that cook down for a little while. And again, you know, I think a lot of people, I see folks that are not, um, maybe well, they're, they're striving to move in their culinary track to be cooks or to make good things. So a lot of the secrets with cooking, it's not tricky, but it's time. You cannot just throw everything at the same time. Just like you said, harder vegetables first, the prep work here. All together, once you've done this, it might be a, less than 40 minutes of actual cooking, but it's done over two hours because you first, or three hours, because you first have to hydrate the uh, peppers, you know, blend this, do that. So. so we've done that. And that color is going to be beautiful because of the peppers. I love that color. I just made, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I made homemade tortilla soup. A little bit similar with the peppers, hydrating them and making that paste and that color of that red is so gorgeous. So that's our tortillas. Now these actually heated up with the um so really quickly back with the mango sauce. So you're gonna wait to put in the hominy at least until the end. We're gonna let those cook. Um so let me just get these little gas for you off this grill. I need to see. And then um, Olga Menudo, uh, lunch, dinner, it's a whole meal on its own. You won't have like a little cup of Menudo and then have something else. I mean, it's a meal, right? Yeah, absolutely. Menudo, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's a full meal. What I love about this vegan opt version is that uh, you can have it at any time of day. It's easy to digest. You know, it, you know, you can have that late at night. And you, I think you might live a little bit longer. <laughs> Just, yeah. you know. Yeah, no, really, really healthy. Again, the way you're making it is unbelievable. I mean, very low in fat. Now, would people have tortillas with menudo then too? Tell me again. Absolutely. Yeah. Tortillas come with menudo. Yeah. Um, you know, so you definitely want it with this. And there's, it's, it's so beautiful having a bowl of menudo. And you, um, you know, in Mexico, they use, they, we, we, I mean, they use spoons, but you know, there's nothing like ripping a tortilla off and scooping it oh, off yeah. and it with the beer. Yeah. Excellent. So, yeah. Now, the tell us, um, before we go into sort of some of the closing here, tell us a little bit about what, uh, tell us about what I can buy at Olga's at I Love Tamales. What kind of tamales can I buy from you? Um, what other things do you sell? Okay, so at I Love Tamales, we have a large variety of tamales. Um, during Thanksgiving, we have a Thanksgiving dinner tamale. Um, and I know it's crazy. I say that to people, they're like, wait, what? And I'm like, yes. It's Thanksgiving dinner. People are like, that is brilliant. And, and I'm not, it's my favorite tamale, but it's, you know, it has all of the things you want in a Thanksgiving dinner. So that's, that's just Thanksgiving dinner. I mean, we have a um, hot Cheeto tamale. So, we, wow. so that's a very attractive one. A lot of people come to us. Our tamales are really, really, really big. So the first thing people come to us and they say is, oh, I want to buy tamales, but are they a lot of masa? Definitely not. That's exactly why I got into this business because I knew that every time I bought a tamale, they put just this little strand of meat in there and I would yeah. get so frustrated. So I changed the game, um, not just for me, but for other tamale ladies um, as well. You know, I, um, 
you could come to us, you could buy, um, you know, a large, like I said, uh, I'm sorry, we, we just have a large variety. We have Mexican pot roast, we have our traditional, we got our pork, our chicken. Um, then we have, you know, a little bit off ones. We have our Mexican pot roast. We have um, calabacitas, which is a vegan option. Yeah, course, nice. We have a belly kale tamale, also delicious. Um, okay. If you, you know, we have a sweet corn tamale. We upgrade our tamales. If you come to our tech, we, uh, if you come to our trailer, we have we serve tamale bombs. So what a tamale bomb is is an upgrade. So you take your tamale and we might add cheese salsa and sour cream to it, and you have this enormous meal, and it's so delicious, and um, it's it's just amazing. You you uh, it really does. If you're a tamale person, you will be blown away. Trust me. Mm-hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. And thoughts for expansion, i.e. maybe getting your tamales in some grocers? Thoughts for that or not so much? Um, absolutely. Uh, right now I'm working on putting together, um, I want, I, I'm putting plans together for a manufacturing facility. I would like to make this just a little bit easier. Yeah. Uh, we still make all of our tamales by hand, homemade. Uh, we still use all uh, as many natural ingredients as we can. Um, but yeah, that's definitely where we would like to be at a grocery store. So hopefully yeah. we'll be there soon. Yeah, wonderful. Okay, good, Olga. This is wonderful. You really taught me a lot too. I appreciate it. So give some closing advice to someone who is, you know, bringing their blank blank over to dinner parties and people are saying, oh my gosh, this is so good. Or somebody right now that maybe has an idea around a food and beverage business. You know, what kind of advice would you give someone that's thinking about starting a business that already is in business and maybe even struggling a little bit and needs some words of wisdom? I mean, I can see you're a really strong, passionate, wonderful person. So give some advice. Shout it out there. First thing I want to tell you is don't give up. Uh, the second thing is I want you to look bare, look at what you're doing. Look at what you're making, whatever your product is. You need to get your product in order first. Once you have your product in order, if, you know, products call people, you know, so even like me, like me selling tamales at my trip, like, oh, I can make tamales at home, but check it out. You can't make these tamales at home. You've got to try these, trust me. And so, you know, another thing, a good product sells itself, you know, yeah. and um, I'm confident in my product because I feel like it's the best. I really do. Um, maybe somebody else might not feel that way, but you need to keep your confidence always. Um, and then the next thing I want to tell you is to make sure that whatever it is that you're doing, that it's sustainable, that that you could go back and get your product, that you're not overwhelming yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. if you're like me, I'm a mom, I have three children, they're all under the age of 11, okay? I'm exhausted and I understand, but that doesn't mean you want to give up. Uh, that, that doesn't mean you give up. What you do is you go harder, you become more organized, you get your schedule together and you try to find time for yourself and that's another thing then you want to find time to love yourself and your passion and once you have those things in order you have product you have confidence you have you're organized and you find passion for what you're actually doing you're already winning so i really want you to think about that you know when you decide you want to quit that job when you're tired of looking at the clock or you're tired of hump wednesday which let's face it, most of us are, um, you know, think about it, you know, don't, don't be scared because what do you have to lose? I, you know, that's another thing that I have. It's like, you don't have, you don't have anything to lose. There's, you know, you, you just, my, my, and so personally, my biggest fear is dying without getting done what I want. And so <laughs> I don't know if that sounds crazy, but for sure. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's, that's beautiful. Oh, okay, that's beautiful. I have an expression I use often. It's usually the things in life that we don't do that we regret, not the things that we do do. Absolutely. So beautiful. Thank you so much. I wish you the best. We'll put Thank together a great you. show. We'd love to show your husband's commercial on it too. Um, okay. To the audience, you know, right after this, of course, we'll have the recipes. So thank you so much. Oh my God, thank you for having me. I appreciate you guys. I hope to see you at I Love Tamales at our food truck. You can follow us on Facebook. Um, and we look forward to seeing you. Thank okay, you. take care. Thank Bye. You. In all the whole town, the most wonderful spot is the I Love Tamales truck that serves tamales hot. The red ones are pork and the chicken are green. And then for dessert, try a churro supreme. Tamales.